We are back with our She Can channel where we interview women from all walks of life from all over the world on their journey, how they got to where they are today. And I'm really excited to talk to Thaisia, who is joining us from Georgia. Thaisia, you have founded an online magazine called Holod and you have a really complex journey. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. Um, yeah, so basically, I'm 32 years old. I'm from Russia. Uh, I lived most of my life uh, near Moscow. Uh, and um, uh, I graduated from uh, Moscow University uh, from the Faculty uh, of Journalism. Uh, and uh, then uh, at um, four years ago, actually, I started my own news uh, outlet, which was not news outlet. At the beginning, it was more of a storytelling media. It was long-form stories. Uh, usually, they were pretty dark, I would say, uh, from different regions of Russia. It was um, There were a lot of uh, true crime stories and stories about injustice and uh, crime and um, violence. Uh, so we were basically focused on human rights in Russia and uh, specifically Sometimes uh, there were stories about women and uh, violence against women. Uh, and um, in this year, uh, like uh, half of the year ago, I founded uh, a second media outlet, which is called The Braid. Uh, it's pronounced Kosa Media in Russian, uh, which is basically about women rights and uh, violence against women and so on. Um, that was because I saw that, uh, there is a lack of equality journalism. If we talk uh, about uh, Russian women and women of Central Asia and all the Russian speaking women in the world, because they uh, usually in these countries, they have the same problems. So now I have two media outlets, that's it. <laughs> That's amazing, Thaisia. And you are one of the BBC's most inspirational 100 women, which is really incredible. And we're so um, proud of your level of service. And I would love to know a little bit more. So your day to day job is now running two media outlets. You you fled Russia and and opened your office in Georgia. You got a lot of uh, journalists out. Um, tell us a little bit more about your day to day job and also where you're at in that journey. Is this a final destination? Have you got a team on the ground with you now? What is the situation? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, I live in Georgia, yes, uh, and I um, lived here for uh, two years now. Uh, so when the war started, I managed to evacuate my team from Russia. And right now we are based in six countries, I think. Uh, and uh, that's quite challenging, I would say, because we all work mostly remotely. Uh, and sometimes it's hard to keep all these connections and uh, and uh, good work and so on. But um, we manage to do that. And sometimes we can see each other. We don't have an actual office, uh, not in Georgia, not anywhere. But we have some co-working space, which we can use with some other media outlets. Uh, and um, basically, I work from my house, usually with my free cats. Uh, and um, I would say that, uh, yeah, there is a lot of work, uh, but I don't know how to to make it um, easier if we talk about workload, because, uh, you know, it's, it's really important things uh, to keep a media outlet going. And um, I really... Mm, like invested in Russian journalism, if we talk about it, its future, and because I really think that we need to keep our profession and uh, uh, not allow to make it like going extinct. Uh, and um, I was thinking uh, lately that we really need 
a school for journalists inside Russia. Uh, and um, basically, we managed to launch the school. And right now we have uh, uh, we have started uh, to um, to get people from Russia to 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 come to this online school, and I I really hope that it will be really useful for them. Uh, so I would say that that's my priority right now to work with journalists inside Russia. Yeah, that's amazing. Taisia, you have been declared a foreign agent by Russian Ministry of Justice in 2021, which yeah. is why you had to leave and it was compromising, your work was compromised, your life, your purpose was compromised, your team's purpose was compromised. So how, uh, what is your main motivator when you do what you do on a daily basis, which is really pushing forwards? setting up the school for journalists, really pushing forward. Journalism is about finding the truth, right? The truth and not sort of a, a truth uh, that, 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 that might not be exactly what happened. How, how do you maintain that motivation going forwards? And what is your main motivator? Uh, you know, I would say that I, I'm really interested in three things um russia i want uh, my country to be democratic and happy and free uh and i want to the war to stop uh and um second thing uh is women uh, i'm really like i really want women in all the world to be free uh and uh, to have their own um, freedom and financial freedom if we talk about Korea, maybe, and all these things. Uh, and uh, in Russia, there are still regions where women are not free at all. Uh, and I am I really want to support them too. Uh, and the third thing, thing uh, is cats. <laughs> I would say that <laughs> I'm really interested in cats since I live in Georgia, because there are a lot of uh, stray cats here and... Uh, as they usually are not getting uh, lots of attention and so they can be sick and they can be dying on the streets and that is really hard. So um, um, people laugh that uh, I, I have like a second job here to save all the cats. So <laughs> basically I have three of my own cats and also I have uh, lots of them who I need to to you know to give food to and so on uh so Russia women and cats uh that's uh, what I'm interested in uh and uh if we talk about um, future I really want to go back to my country to go home uh so I guess that's um a huge reason uh to do what I'm doing because I, I really want a R Russia to be free and I need that to go back home. So, yeah. 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 Amazing, Taisia. So uh, what top qualities do you think you have to do what you do so well and you do so many different things, right? You fight for Russia, you fight for freedom, you tell the truth, you try and uh, portray the truth, you fight for women's rights, for women's equality, what what makes you so good at that? Um, I would say my high levels of anxiety <laughs> and uh, perfectionism. Uh, that's what uh, makes my life miserable. But uh, at the same time, um, it makes me pretty good at my job because it um, uh, you need a lot of attention to details when you're run, running media outlets because there are lots of ethical problems sometimes, uh, things that you need to avoid and so on. And uh, there are a lot of lots of risks which you need to be able to, to see and to avoid because we are working in really hard and difficult environment and we need to keep our minds like mm, alive and uh, see what's going on so 
I would say, yeah, that, that you need some level of um, anxiety to keep that. And uh, also uh, a lot of, you need attention to the details. And I guess that's <laughs> that's what I would say. Yeah. Taisia, and what are you most proud of to date? I would say that I'm proud of my team because I managed to, to, to gather some people together which are really talented and they are really invested in what they are doing and uh, they want to go home uh, just like me. And um, that's what keeps us going, I would say that. Taisia, what top tips would you give um, younger girls or any woman out there who are in your position, right? They had to flee their country, set up somewhere else, but are fighting for a future that means they can go back home. Uh, yeah, that's that's really a specific situation, uh, but uh, actually there are a lot of women there out there who, who are in the same situation. I know that because I talked uh, recently to some uh, some women from Iran and Syria and Afghanistan, and uh, basically sometimes we see we have the same problems uh, if we talk about our countries and uh, going back and so on. And I would say that what is what can can be really helpful in this situation is building community, uh, building female community. Um, because I think that women know how to support each other, basically. And uh, I would say that talking to these women from these countries, I felt like I'm not alone and uh, that we basically have same problems and maybe we can help each other with that because sometimes there are not all only like, you know, technical problems and so on, but also psychological problems with what we are doing uh, because we feel like, that we are left alone and that uh, we are not connected to our country anymore and so on. And uh, talking to these women, I felt like I am understood and uh, that we share some common knowledge. So basically, if I can give any tip, I would say build community and uh, find some female friends because we know how to support each other. Yeah, connect with women. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Yeah, thank you for that, Taisia. And what plans, goals, dreams do you have for your future other than going home? So how do you foresee your next, let's say, two, three, four, five years? Uh, yeah, basically, uh, I just talked about uh, building a community and that's what I want to do in my second media outlet, uh, The Braid. We really want to build a strong female community there. And uh, maybe not only for women from Russia, but also for other women, uh, because I really think that in last years, I, I just uh, felt that this is a really important thing to do, uh, especially if you are in a situation like ours, when we are like not, not home actually, and uh, uh, not having like, Mm, strong support group and uh, that's what I want to do I want to build uh, a strong community which will support women uh, and uh, where women can support each other and come together and make some collaborations and help each other to <clears throat> find job or to to fight violence or, or to do something else so that's uh, my plans if we talk about uh, the braid uh the female media outlet and uh if we talk about uh holod uh which means the cold in russian i want uh to build a strong net of inside journalists and sources so we can keep getting information from inside russia because situation is getting worse and we really need to know what's going on uh, because if we don't do that, we will have the situation same as Chernobyl, for example, when people basically didn't get any information about what's going on. So 
I would say that that's my priorities. And if I have some uh, time left, I would say that I want to build some um, some structure for cats <laughs> to help cats and to save them. But I, I'm not sure if I would have any time for that. But yeah. Yeah, amazing. Taisia, have you had any role models on your journey? Um, you know, I can't say about role models because um, I grew up in a really misogynistic um, environment. I would say I, I didn't grow up in some progressive, uh, you know, uh, environment. Uh, so basically, when I was a little girl, I, I was reading and thinking more about male characters and literature for example because i didn't i didn't know any examples of like female leadership or so on so basically i grew up a little bit misogynist myself i, I would say and uh, only when i grew up i saw a lot of bright and smart and like really uh, talented women uh, which i want uh, to be friends with and so on. So I would say that I am still in this journey of uh, finding other women. And um, uh, yeah, so I, I can say about role models, but I would say that I have a lot of really talented and bright female friends um, who are uh, like uh, not only journalists, but also activists uh, and uh, great uh, NGO workers and so on. So I I'm really excited that I have such such an environment right now. Yeah. Amazing, Taisia. Thank you so much for talking to us today and for this inspiring conversation. And we are standing with you side by side. And this is the global community of women, our sisterhood that we need to fix. So that yeah. I've really strongly about so I'm excited to hear more about your uh, female media outlet and uh, and expand that to something international and to watch your journey going forwards and thank you for your high level of service and for making this incredible 100 most inspiring women that the BBC launched thank you so much it was really nice to meet you